Hang on, kids. This is a best of bad crypto podcast episode. While Sir Lord Travis Wright and myself are on vacation and we have dug into the archives to find our first encounter, our first interview with Mr. John McAfee, raw and uncensored episode number 100, which originally aired March 20th, 2018, four and a half years ago. And boy, are you guys in for a treat? People, please, listening to these guys from Bad Crypto, you know they are some of the baddest motherfuckers I've ever met. And you're going to really enjoy this podcast. <laughs> Listen through the earballs of early 2018 as we bring mm-hmm. you John McAfee, raw and uncensorified. Parental advisory, explicit content. Parental discretion is advised. This podcast is rated E for excellent. (laughs) There is no one in the blockchain space more controversial than John McAfee. Once the founder of a software company that he now disowns, John has a rap sheet that's longer than his biography. Some people love him. Some people hate him. And there's probably a few people who don't know who he is. But you are about to embark on a journey into the mind of a true internet pioneer and blockchain enthusiast. Warning, this episode is rife with language and content which may offend your sensibilities. John said we could ask him absolutely anything, so we did. Tell your kiddos to go play outside because this is the no holds barred, completely raw and uncensored episode number 100 of the Bad Crypto Podcast. Five, four, three, two, one, two, ignition. Who's bad? Mr. Travis Wright, I got chills listening to myself do that teaser. (laughs) You impress yourself easily. It was like a movie trailer in a world. We've been trying to get John on the show now for several months. That is true. We were not worthy until finally we were worthy. Yeah. Unworthy, now worthy. Well, you know, he's a busy guy and you never know where in the world he is. In fact, we didn't know where in the world he was for this interview, but we did record it on Skype uh, using video. So that means we have video of this as well. And and we're going to post the video of this on the Bad Crypto page on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash bad crypto. So we'll pin this to the top of the page. Please go like the page facebook.com forward slash bad crypto and then share this interview um and and let others know about it yeah he, he was rocking his sunglasses the whole time very very interesting i think he took a swig of some beer while we were chatting with him uh very very interesting interview and i i i think out of all of the shows that we've done this right here is to me when when we were finished with it i was like wow that to me is the highlight of bad crypto so far and uh, you guys will you guys will uh, be able to ascertain if that's true or not. But that was my thought when we were done. I was like, wow, because you know what? It was really cool for me because I worked at I've, I worked at Norton uh, with Semantic as the global digital strategist. And so John McAfee is a name that has sort of rang in my ears for years, way before this blockchain stuff and his uh, scenario and Belize and all that other stuff that's that's gone down. This guy is like he is like a, a an outlaw. You know what I mean? Like a like a. Uh, an old school. He's like 72. You're not going to meet too too many cooler 72 year olds than this dude. This is uh, this is raw and uncensored. This is this is who he is. And this is, you know, what he did. And we're just going to let it go. Um, and that's it. So it is very the show few, for the I would say this. Very few people give less Fox than John McAfee. <laughs> He doesn't have any left to give. I mean, let's just let's be honest. And you're going to hear a lot of them in this interview. So uh, let's you guys are ready for this. I think you're ready. I don't know. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Listen. Enjoy. John McAfee. Well, ladies and gentlemen, citizens of bad cryptopia and the republic and all that it's finally happening it's happening ah yep the one the only john mcafee is with us today he's a man who needs no introduction he's got a bio a mile long but screw that let's get right to the questions hey john how you doing 
I'm doing good. I, I think my rap sheet is longer than my bio, however. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. We uh, we polled. Are you our, laughing? But it really is. So that, we'll, we'll link to that in the show notes. Then right. we uh, we polled the citizens of the Republic of Bad Cryptopia in advance and said, "Ask us all the, the tell us all the things you want us to ask John about, and preface them with serious or funny." Uh, and then uh, John, I asked you beforehand if there was anything off limits and you said something about cannibalism or whatever and uh but you said ask anything so that's what we're going to do so mr travis Wright, first question to you well so obviously the the 900 pound elephant in the room everyone like every funny joke was about your dick everyone wants to know about john mcafee's dick and uh what condiments are you going to use is it, are you going to barbecue it is it going to be a skewer are you going to boil your dick bake your dick make a dick lasagna um <laughs> <laughs> what are the logistics? On you. What are the logistics the of this? First question, the first question is going to be: uh, Am I going to sever it before I eat it? I mean, <laughs> uh, but you know, no one's asked that question. That's true. Well, That's here, true. It might be more I'm, flexible. I'm not, I'm, not I'm not concerned about condiments or anything else because I can promise you now: uh, I do not bet on anything that I have any opportunity of losing on. I'm fucking Irish, so please God, no, that that bet is a sure thing. Uh, let me ask you a question. You know how the mining is working in, in Bitcoin, yes? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. so uh, the, the difficulty lever, le, uh, level increases as more and more miners get into things. The very last Bitcoin, let's assume there's only one-tenth of the current miners. We still have 10,000 of those that are going to be mining that last Bitcoin. And they'll be mining it for years, right? Because it's going to take years to find that motherfucker because the difficulty rate is going to be going through the roof. Now, let's assume we're still willing to do it. Why? We're a fucking business. That means that we're willing to put in tens of billions of dollars to mine one fucking Bitcoin. So what is the value of that Bitcoin? It's certainly in the trillions. Now, why don't you just work backwards from that, people, and take the absolute worst case scenario for December of 2020? It's going to be between two and 15 million dollars. Good God, any third grader could do this. So that bet is impossible to lose. And I don't give a shit if Bitcoin goes to 50 cents by midsummer of 2018. Because I don't give a shit. It's 2020 I'm concerned about. Mm. Now, that's two years out. You can absolutely predict a spread that $1 million is not going to be, even be close to the low end of that spread. So, yeah, I'm not eating my dick because I can't lose that bet because mathematics says I can't fucking lose it. No. Work it out, kids. Okay, so what what do you think? Is everything that's happening right now, is it pure market manipulation? Is this simply suppression so that the big boys can come in and acquire as much as possible, or are there other forces at work? Well, good God, there are other forces at work. Please. I mean, okay, if you're looking for, okay, if you're, let's say you're a, a detective and you're looking for a murderer, who do you look for? The one who benefited most, right? Follow the money. Okay, here's an example. I mean, are you probably too young to remember the uh, uh, the murder of a very famous football player's wife uh, back in the 80s? There's was a massive manhunt, uh, you know, ending on the highway. Now, you would say, who benefited from that murder? Well, it's obviously it was Michael Jackson because everybody was talking about Michael Jackson sleeping with young boys. And after that murder, no one heard his name again. Now, that's being humorous, mm. right? Nevertheless, it's the extreme of what you do. So, so who benefits from chaos in the crypto market? Governments and banks. Now, have governments and banks even noticed us? Fuck yes. Have they tried to fuck with us? Fuck yes. Banks. Okay, I, I have accounts, I had accounts at Wells Fargo and Bank of America that refused to accept cash or anything from or to Coinbase. Those accounts had to be shut down. Try and buy crypto with a fucking credit card on any bank. It's harder than hell. Now, are we fighting back? Yes. You guys certainly know Brock Pierce. He's the only other man in this, this industry who will say and do whatever he fucking wants. Snappy so, dresser. Well, he is, and he's a good friend of mine. And do not ever 
try to out party that motherfucker. <laughs> he was, so, so you know, I speak at almost all of his conferences. We went to Bucharest last year. After my talk, after my keynote, Brock rented a big ass bus, took all of his friends to Dracula's castle. After we left the castle on the bus, he handed out ecstasy to everybody on the bus and then cranked up some massive speakers on the bus. And we all sang and partied all the way from Dracula's castle back to Bucharest, mm. stopping along the way to terrify and horrify the locals in, in, um, in Romania. So that's the type of party he was. And that was not the party. It's when we got back that the party began. You know, he took us to an underground nightclub in Bucharest that I can't even possibly describe. So, so he's a partier, but he's brilliant. And he fucking owns this space in Asia. If you doubt that, you have no idea who he is. So he yesterday announced the creation of 20 crypto banks. Now, the response when I tweeted was, oh, yeah, we need more fucking banks. Yes, we do need more fucking banks that will accept our credit cards and our accounts for cryptocurrency that act like real custodians of fucking currencies. So, yes, we need it. Now, he doing that has completely removed the threats that the Bank of America, Wells Fargo, uh, J.P. Morgan, and everybody else has placed on us by going, we're going to prevent you from using your money. Well, fuck you people. We're doing it ourselves. Mm. They're, they're shutting down all of the exchanges very subtly. The SEC said, hey, if you're, if you're a crypto exchange, you better fucking register with us. You know what that means? You, you have to play ball by their rules. They own you. We're no longer an independent crypto club. No, we are owned by the SEC. Well, I'm not having any of that shit. So next month, I'm coming out with the McAfee coin, the f first fully distributed exchange, which requires no goddamn server. You have a wallet, and also I'm putting the wallet in the browser. Why didn't we fucking do that to, to begin with? Well, we've got a wallet out here, then we got all of the work on a browser, and we've got to bounce back and forth. What insanity is that? So I'm putting the wallet in the browser. The wallet is the exchange. Everybody participates in the exchange who has a wallet in your fucking browser. Now you shut that thing down. I don't know anything about it. I get no money from it. It's open source. You download it. You're an exchange. So you're going to have 10 million people. You shut down five of them. Nothing changes. We're still a distributed exchange. Shut that fucker down. Make a law that we care about. Are you going to have 10 million enforcement people standing inside everybody's house watching what everybody does on their browser in order to shut down the McAfee exchange? Try that. Try that, motherfuckers. It isn't going to work. Yeah. So we're finding that. No, that, no, that's great because you know, you know, we've talked about this a lot on Bad Crypto. You know, the the conversations that are being that are being had in Washington, the SEC, the CFTC, is this a you know the even the IRS views crypto as property, the CFTC views it as a commodity, the SEC views it as a security. I mean, what you know, and I look at this as saying. Well, all of these new companies are leaving America. It's leaving, like, the more that they try to regulate this, the more, in my opinion, innovation is heading out, right? They're, they're going to Singapore. They're going to Gibraltar or, or the Cayman Islands or whatever. Like, what can we do as Americans in America to ensure that all of that innovation doesn't leave us at, as, they're, as they're putting in all these regulations? Listen, I, I, think, I think that's a fucked up perspective. Innovation doesn't leave us. Who the fuck are we? We have a distributed world that we are trying to get behind to make not people in America, nor people in China, nor, nor Australia, nor Tierra del Fuego, not, not to make mm. them powerful and owners, but to give up that shit. Why don't you go back to the Beatles and listen to John Lennon's Imagine one more fucking time. Mm. Imagine there's no country. It's easy if you try. Imagine there's just people living day to day. See, that's my view of the world, and you need to get that view of the world if you're going to be in this fucking cryptocurrency mm. thing, because this is what we're behind. We're not behind power for the country, for a group, for whites, for blacks, for Hispanics, or Eskimos who are supposed to be the best fucks on the planet. I don't know. I've never tried. Um, by the way, I can say these words here, right? 
that Otherwise, you guys can find ten million dollars already. So, <laughs> this no, doesn't bother yeah. me. I actually go on television, and for every banned word, I have a word that means the same, uh, but they can't find me for. For example, if uh, I, I went out and fucked some chick on Friday, I went, yeah, yeah, man, I, I, went, I had a date on Friday and nailed this bird. I can say that shit, mm-hmm. right? Or if it's fucked in the other contest, you know, I would say uh, ass bird. Okay, or butt bug. I'm sorry, butt bug. They cannot ban that word. So anyway, I don't have to worry about that here. But no, you have to get the attitude that we are one people in this world, and we are. Mm-hmm. And it is the creation of the separation of nations. It's that that we're after. Mm-hmm. It, that's what we're after. So if yeah, if the technology leaves this country, please God, leave this country, because it's the creation of the idea of this country, mm. which has laws. The coalescence of power. State, then, statism is a powerful drug for a lot of people. I mean, it's the yeah, it's the biggest religion for most. I've, I have traveled the world far too much to want to buy that crap. Mm. So let's we'll move on to that, so we don't get into a fist fight. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, well, I don't, I don't see these are fist fights these happening. Are, these we are don't... fans asking questions, so we wanted to wanted to bring them up for you. We don't even know where you are because it's an undisclosed location in a hovel in a cave somewhere in the world. So we're good with that. Uh, so you're you are regularly touting various coins on <clears throat> on the Twitters, and there's some people that you know accuse you of pumping and dumping stuff. And we know that you're being compensated very well to promote coins. Just just tackle that whole subject. Well, of course I am. This is a business, goddammit. Every, everything we do, what you're doing is a business. You're getting compensated by this somehow, either with money or with power or with prestige or with influence or with some assagement of your ego, which makes you feel better knowing that you're talking to the hundreds of thousands of people or whatever your, your, your viewership is. Sure, everybody gets compensated. You're doing it for compensation. I'm doing this for compensation. But if we have any fucking sense, we do what we love for compensation. Why? You get compensated a lot more. And it's not work. It's your heart. Now, so why don't you take a look at the fucking coins that I, quote, have uh, pumped and dumped. I stopped doing coin recommendations so people could not um, accuse me of that. I did ICOs. Why? You can't pump and dump a fucking ICO. So what were the ICOs that I chose? Let's let's pick one. One of my fucking favorites, outings. Okay, what a fucking great concept. I pick the coins that I want to actually see exist in this world and performing the purpose for which they were designed. Outings, what a great concept. I'm an out-of-the-box person. I don't like to go downtown, watch a movie, and come back. No, if it's a beautiful day, let's go downtown, L.A., New York, Chicago, wherever. See if I can find some street musicians. Well, in, in L.A., you can probably find one in every fucking town somewhere, but where? Kind of hard to say. In Santa Monica, it's easy. They're on, the, they're on that main you know, street that's the pedestrian street. But if you're not in Santa Monica, what happens? Well, if you have the outing app and there are other people out of their houses, someone's going to see one. And they're going to go, a street musician, keys it in. I go, whoa, that's what I'm looking for. He goes, great. I'll tell you what, for 10 outings, I'll tell you where the fucker is. I want that app. Now, I'm not going to get that app. Why? Because the people who are buying these fucking coins are not buying them for the purpose that they were intended to. They're buying them to holes, hoping that, you know, the price is going to go up. That's fucked up. That's not what this thing is about when this started do you think that people were buying bitcoin for an investment no they were buying bitcoin because they saw in this magic this mathematics created by satoshi a means of taking that fucking power that tells you what to do when to do it don't smoke weed Or if you do, do it in a state where it's legal and only because you need it medically. Fuck that shit. No, I don't want people telling me at my age what I can and cannot do with my own body and my own mind. His body, his choice. Pardon? My body, my choice. That's right. Yeah. So, you know, I go, uh, I, I confess to using crypto. 
uh, for for hookers. Big fucking deal. Well, yes, it is. The government does not allow me to do that. You, Mr. McAfee, cannot do that. We don't like you doing that. And if you do that, and if you confess to it, we're going to, you know, put your ass in jail. Please, God, do that. I've been in more jails than God, and I'm quite comfortable if you give me a bed and a fucking meal once a day. So, no, that does not scare me. What scares me is that the people who are not willing to do this have to live like sheep. Satoshi gave these sheep power beyond belief. What do they do with it? Ooh, we can make money. Well, fuck that shit. That's what you got you in this position to begin with. The government says, we'll let you work nine to five, five days a week. You belong to me. And I'm going to take 20% of the money that you earn working five days a week, 52 weeks out of the year. Until you reach the age of 60 and you're too old to do anything, we're going to let you off and give you a pittance for retirement and a gold goddamn watch. This is your life, people. Mm -hmm. We are slaves to the fiat currency. Uh, We have to, you know, it's like that's the way the system is set up. We got off of one type of slavery, moved on to an economic slavery, it it, it seemed, as we with civilization. Yes. And so he gave you and me and everybody the opportunity to take it back. And what happened? For three years, we worked on it. The crypto world from the beginning was a movement of politics, the politics of the individual, the movement of the power from this pinnacle of this goddamn pyramid that owns us back to ourselves, removing it for them. And the, and the uh, Jimmy and, and the Warren Buffets, where are they? They're out on the goddamn streets with a hat begging for a dime. It was doing that. Then what happened? Human greed. Well, we can pump and dump this shit. These coins are an opportunity themselves for us to make money, but in a different way. The governments are salivating at that shit. They're going to develop their own cryptocurrencies and force us to use them, and we're going to be happy about it, and they're going to own us even more. Please, God, people, look at what you have done. Mm. You've nationalized it. You've personalized it. You've taken your greed and used it, and every fucking ICO that comes out that could change your life for the better. You subvert, you destroy, you twist, and you pervert it into a means for you to get more of that lucre. Pray to the god of mammon. I want a fucking Lambo. I want to tell you something. I've owned Lambos. They're the worst goddamn cars in the world. And if you get (laughs) miles out of them, then I will eat my dick a second time. All right? So please. When when moon. When moon. (laughs) Yes. So, So no. Stop. Stop. This doesn't belong to a country Mm. or a political movement other than the movement of the individual. This does not create a means for you to get more of that power that you can wield over other people by going, I I got a Lambo and you don't. No, it's giving you the power to escape the prison you've been in for 2000 years. I I have a question around this because I I really would love to hear your perspective on this one, because I think it's, it's interesting to me because nobody knows who Satoshi Nakamoto is. They don't know if it's a person, if it's an entity. And, you know, there's a really interesting white paper from 1996 that's on MIT that says how to make a mint, the cryptography of anonymous electronic cash that was created by the NSA uh, Office of Information Security Research and Technology. Now, from your perspective, do you think that Satoshi Nakamoto was an entity or do you think it was potentially the NSA who created this cryptocurrencies originally? Like you started this conversation with an absolute falsehood. Nobody knows who Sakamoto Nashimoto is. Right. <laughs> it's, it's, it's it. it is hard to say. <laughs> Nobody knows who he is. You are absolutely incorrect on that. Okay. Absolutely fucking incorrect. And there are many who knows who he is, and none will ever divulge it. I'm telling you now. So you are just living in a false world by going, hey, nobody knows who he is. He may be. No, you're wrong. He is not an entity. He is an individual. I will tell you that much only. So now let's move on to something more relevant. Maybe we should have said we don't know who he is because he hasn't showed up on, on our door. Right. For He's sure. not been on back crypto. 
We just had uh, a gentleman by the name of Tone Vase on the show. He does technical analysis, and basically he is a Bitcoin purist, loves Bitcoin, and says basically all the rest of it is is worthless. And there's others out there saying 99% of these altcoins are scams. And that blows my mind because, as you're saying, these are things that can change the world. What do you say to those guys? Uh, they're correct. 99% are scams. With that 1%. Listen, everything, every ICO that I have created except for one, Phenacoin, which was a scam, and they fooled me. I spent two hours talking to their, quote, chief developer, brilliant uh, Oxford-educated person, allegedly, that knew every fucking answer there was, including the main – if you want to find out how good a programmer is, you get him down into the hardware and you say, I've got a computer with two registers, no fucking memory. And all you have are Boolean operators who want you to move the contents of this one to here. How do you fucking do it? There's not one program in a million that knows the answer. Well, I am one of them. I asked this question to him. He goes, yeah, well, X or A, B, X or B, A, X or A, B. Go, fuck me. He didn't work for them. They paid him $20,000 mm. to talk to me. Now, that's the type of scams we're dealing with. After that, I hired the Crypto Connection in Chicago. Every fucking ICO I recommend, before I even talk to these people, we audit them. Now, that audit is done by a bunch of hackers, right, that go in, they find out every fucking thing the founders have done. Among the things we found, one ICO, every single individual in the white paper was a fake person. Did not exist, even though they had photographs or probably some relative that died last year. Who knows? They didn't exist. They weren't fucking real. Now, tell me that's not a scam. So, yes, most of them are. But with the single exception of the second one I recommended, only because I was so snowed by the quote, the developer, we haven't recommended a scam. But we've come across hundreds, well, maybe thousands of them now. We go, why don't you? Tell the world. I did about one of them. I got death threats. I got lawsuits. So I'm not doing any more. This is the problem we're dealing with. However, we recommend the good shit. The ones that aren't scams. It doesn't really matter because you turn them into scams by ignoring their purpose mm. and just buying it so that you can make money and fucking sell it without realizing, you know, why am I selling these outing coins instead of collecting a shitload of them and taking my family out so I can find a mime? I haven't found one in three years. Well, you have that outings program. I promise you, you're going to find one the first time you go out. That's going to cost you in outings. Big fucking deal. Mm -hmm. No, we're not doing that. Do you think there's a single goddamn person out there, even though they have a beautiful app that's functioning? Nobody's using it. Nobody. Mm. Please, God, get real people. This is not a means to get rich and buy a Lambo. You're just buying into the very structure you're trying to destroy. Because if you don't destroy the structure, you're going to be in that prison forever. Every fucking ICO has a key. What's that key to? The door to your prison. Take that fucking key. Unlock that door. Get out and take your power with you. Please, God, if you don't do this, I'm not going to play anymore because it is worthless for me to get up and try and promote. Yes, promote the things that can change your life and give you freedom. And you turn it into a means to make money and then yell at me for promoting. Well, fuck you. Mm. Fuck you. Mm. So what has to happen for mass adoption of cryptocurrency and some of these blockchain technologies? I mean, there are a lot of really great you know, uh, utilities out there and a lot of tokens that do really cool stuff. Like you're mentioning with outing, what, how, how do we reach critical adoption when most people are sheep? Yeah. I don't know. This is my tragedy. I'm 72 and I have worked an entire life to free just me and being free. I realized that it's a scary world being free. The first thing you got to do is take responsibility for yourself and your actions because you realize that as a free human being, man, woman, child, whatever you do is you. No one's forcing you. And all the repercussions of your actions are you. And if you don't have the balls to say, yeah, I did it. I promoted a Nigerian scam. 
I posted, pinned it on the fucking wall. I put, I, I did. My apologies, but I promise you this, it will never happen again, and it never will. Let's do a quick lightning round, like short answers, yeah. just boom, top of mind. I got 10 of them. They're all over the map. All right, you ready? I'm ready, yes. All right, here we go. Fast answers. Jamie Dimon. <laughs> Asshole number one. Next. Newport so cigarettes. Pardon? Newport cigarettes. Uh, and any cigarette is good. Bitcoin cash. Um, I love Jihan, and I also love Roger Ver. They're the smartest people I know. Uh, I'm fully behind them. I don't care if they're if they're kidnapping old ladies and using them for sex slaves. I'm behind it. Next, most most beautiful place in the world. Belize. Fake Twitter accounts. Uh, I, they're they're a lot of fun to play with, and I sometimes go in just to see what I'm doing and recommending as other people. Comfiest shoes. I'm wearing them right now. I don't know if you can see them. What's the brand? All right. <laughs> All right. Uh, what, what's the brand? I, I have no clue. There's no brand on them. Okay. I buy everything cheap, cheap and brandless. The first thing you do when you free yourself is you free yourself from brands. All so, right. How about people who get offended? Uh, my Twitter followers. <laughs> Ethereum. Um, it's the only thing that I use for actual payments. And buying things. Last one. Best album ever. Oh, Jesus Christ. I would have to say Crosby, Stills, and Nash, and Young. Their first album, I think it was just called Crosby, Stills, and Nash, and Young. Teach your children well. That was very yeah. good. I, I want to touch base on, on, on something here because you had a great presentation. I believe it was at D10E back in 2017. And you were talking about mobile phones and why they are so treacherous, the security on those. So, you know, I, I was the global digital strategist for Symantec for the Norton brand back in the early 2010s. And so I've seen a lot of this stuff and worked on some of the mobile stuff. And we know that there are vulnerabilities in iOS. We know there's backdoors into the Android. We've we've read Wikipedia or WikiLeaks. We've seen what's going on with that. And I think what you said was really valuable for people to think about because a lot of people are just keeping all their crypto on their mobile device. So what would you tell people who are doing that and, and, and maybe uh, some thoughts around that? But keep in mind that all mobile phones and all mobile devices are designed for one and one purpose only. That is to spy on you. Why? How are they going to sell you something unless they know where you are, who you're with, what you're doing, what you like, or what you're talking about? No. Is that insidious? Not really. If they want to sell me shoes and I don't want to buy them, I can choose not to buy them. What is insidious is because those features are fundamental to the making money for Google, for Sprint, uh, for Samsung. Since they are fundamental elements of the architecture, if I'm a hacker, I'm going to go, good God, I really should be sending 90% of my income to Google and AT&T and Samsung. Because they're allowing me to steal from you. Because they're allowing me to know where you are, who your friends are, get your contacts list, get you to go to any porn site in the world where I have paid them to put a link in that you want to click. And in that link is my keystroke logger. It gets installed. Now I've got your keystroke. So that when you do access your wallet, I don't give a shit what kind of, uh, any kind of compression or um, cryptography you are using. Do I give a shit? No, because I'm watching you type it in. You type it in, go ahead, encrypt it. I don't give a shit. There's nobody in the middle anymore. Nobody's listening. No one's trying to decrypt it. They're looking at screen captures and keystroke loggers. If you can see it in the clear I, as a hacker, can see it in the clear. Get real people. So now, if you're going to use a wallet, use an offline hard wallet. Before you plug the fucker in, disconnect from the internet. After you have unplugged it, connect back up. I lost 47 Ethereum in, in Ethereum's free wallet two months ago, just out of pure carelessness. I had filled it up. I didn't empty it. Someone stole it all. Another one of my employees a week later lost everything is in his Ethereum free wallet. How does this work? Social engineering. You call up the free wallet people. Say, oh, my name's John McAfee. I lost it. Da, 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 da. 
If you talk to enough people, you're going to find some kindly grandmotherly like type saying, you know, my father's in the hospital. He's going to die if I don't get my money. So you can go, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Here are your seed keys. Social engineering. So God, for God's sake, keep your seed keys private. Don't use Ethereum free wallet and use an offline hard wallet. And remember, the instant you turn on your smartphone, the world is listening and watching and will always do so. So uh, we know you're friends with Jihan and saw pictures you recently posted on Twitter. And, you know, that they, they he really owns the mining space, you know, in China. So uh, people want to know, are you involved in any crypto mining? <laughs> for God's sake, I ran a public company, which is the fifth largest miner in the world for two years, MGT. All right. Of course I was. Yeah, but why you're not did, with them anymore. I, why did I walk away? Because it's boring as shit. Hmm. What, what is mining? <laughs> It's a bunch of machines in a cold place sucking up electricity, which you're hoping that you never have to use except for the machines. And the machine's going to warm your building, even at the North Pole, uh, and running numbers about this difficulty rate, electrical usage, and temperature. Good God almighty, do you realize how boring that is? You want to shoot yourself when you go into work in the morning because you know exactly what your day is there's no creativity there's nothing out of the box about it i walked away but, but what's what's the solution but, to this environmental I, I, concern i think god almighty the fifth largest in the world yes of course i have do i know jihan of course i can't buy computers from anybody else and he's the smartest motherfucker i've ever met he's not married do you realize this he's in his 30s he looks like he's in his 15s and he's the most humble man I have ever met. So when I get behind him, fuck yes. I would follow him to the end of the fucking world. I don't give a shit what anybody else thinks. Mining is a business, gentlemen. We don't get into mining for the good of the world. We don't hold hands with our competitors and dance through the daisies. Do you think Norton, and you were from Norton, you think Norton and McAfee, the CEOs, get together? They kiss, make up, and have parties? Fuck no. <laughs> they try to kill them. Right. They try to kill each other in, in business because this is what business is. And businesses centralize. Jihan won the centralization. Good for him. But why are you picking on him rather than the fault in the system, which is you want total de decentralization, not in the utility of your money only, but in the mining of it? Well, fuck people get a brain. It's a business. And you want that to be decentralized? Go and take business one-on-one in any school in the world. You will figure out how that can't work. So, no, don't blame him. Praise him and thank your lucky stars that the man that owns the mining world is humble and desirous of nothing for himself. Praise God, people. And I will, I will defend him to the end, tooth and fucking nail. So you want to you want to throw stones at him? You better fucking throw them at me first. And you want to throw stones at me? You better be prepared for stones thrown back at you. Hmm. I'm just warning the world. All right. <laughs> so you're doing the McAfee coin, right? And someone asked us about that. Your thoughts because you're uh, they said you're building it on the Universa uh, blockchain, uh, and they want to know why why but, did you decide to do that? Is that correct? Did I say that? It said that you're proud to be an advisor. I don't know. They, 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 were, they were talking about you building it on that blockchain or something? I'll tell you about the history of the, of the back of the coin. So the history was uh, I connected up with the largest Chinese venture fund. They had $40 billion in the bank that they were funding things. And I sold a story to them about, do you want to know how to make 100 times as much income? Why don't we let all of the people who buy judge where the money fucking goes? Why don't you have a bunch of uh, 10 million users and they have a coin and they get to vote? Listen, I don't want you putting money into a tomato that rolls down a conveyor belt without bruising because I don't know how that's going to help my children and my grandchildren. I want you to put this money into a, a renewable energy resource or into a cure for cancer or fucking something. Now, why is that going to be good for you? Because you know that wherever you invest that money, it's going to give you a return because the user base of people buying it have already said what they want. I sold them that. Best idea that I've ever come up with. What did the Chinese government do? They banned all ICOs, all of them, just as we were about to come out. Yes, that was, that was on the universal platform. 
I've now moved it. And I've, I have, I'm not going to tell you who my partners are, but they're, again, very brilliant people and they're not Chinese. And the Chinese government cannot touch me. And it's based on a different concept. And it's a totally different idea because I couldn't find another venture capital outfit with $40 billion in the bank willing to listen to me. So I abandoned that. Instead, I got a, a better idea. Why don't we? It's because you ask the question, how do you get new users? You make it absolutely foolproof, obvious, and easy. Step one, take the goddamn wallet concept and throw it away and make your browser your wallet. Same thing. Just as certainly no more, no more insecure. And you give them a piece of hardware wallet. And we'll plug this thing in, you know, uh, before and after you do something with your crypto. And then go about your business. And this will open it up to everybody. Now, that's not easy. It was not easy. Secondly, no matter what we, ha- what we do, the governments will shut down our exchanges. So I go, how do we make that impossible? Your browser is your exchange, as long as you have at least 50,000 other people with browsers. Statistically, that will work. No, is it a with separate a browser? Because, you know, Google Chrome, Steam, you don't want to trust them. Yeah, it's like, it's like a Chrome it's extension. I don't care if, or if you're using Chrome or whatever, it'll work on any browser. Okay. It's a plug-in, plugs into your browser. It's just like mm-hmm. all the plug-ins, okay? So, but it's now part of the browser. No more insecure, a 10 times as easy to understand, 10 times as easy to manipulate and integrate. So that's number one. Number two, I've got a fucking exchange. A fucking exchange. Now, the first rollout, rollout is only for the top 10 cryptos. But listen, it's a start. It's a fucking start. And we will, we will continue to roll out as we promote ICOs into that wallet. Because that's the second problem. Try to get a fucking ICO listed these days. The exchanges are terrified that the SEC is going to go, oh, that's, that's, that's a security. Mm-hmm. So, no, we will have that. Okay, you want an ICO? At the very least, we will, we will take it. And it's going to be just as good as any other exchange, except we don't have a server. We don't have an office. We have no place that the SEC can send a subpoena. I mean, they can send it to my name, but I can't help them. <laughs> Fuck, I don't know. I don't know who these people are because it's a secure coin. They're all fucking anonymous. Can't locate them. Why are you coming to me for? I can't give you any goddamn information. I made this open source. The world's using it. Why come to me? I'm getting nothing from it. So this is the McAfee coin. And, and I tell you, if you want to pervert that into a way to make money, I will shut your ass down one way or the other because I'm not having the McAfee coin perverted into a way to, for people to get goddamn rich. No, I'm giving you the best master key anybody's given you for unlocking your door and getting the hell out of the prison that you, because you are sheep, have placed yourself in. God forbid you fuck with that. You're fucking with me. He's dropping red pills, folks. He's dropping red pills everywhere. So, so let me ask you this then, uh, you know, fiat is, is in total disarray and there's talks about governments then issuing crypto, you know, how long before we have a fed coin before the, the final move from the collapse of fiat to mm-hmm. crypto as government takes sovereign place? coins. Yeah. Well, I hope it's long enough for us to have finally understood what we're doing, which is in getting away from the fed. From the national currencies. Well, it'll be another fiat currency, only it'll be digital. And we will not buy that shit because we will already have coinage that's fucking functional, does the job for which it's intended, and we are using it for that job. Let's hope it's that long because no one will buy it, no one will use it, and we will laugh at it and continue on our separate ways. Kind of like the Petro. Yeah, now see, now I really wanted to get into the Petro, but in order to do that, I'm going to have to change my skin color to the skin color of the normal Venezuelan. I have to move there and live there for 10 years, marry a Venezuelan, and have a bunch of children that are all national citizens, and I can buy it. So now I don't have the time for that. (laughs) 
Good stuff. So now we actually, this is kind of a fun thing. We actually created our own coin uh, called Bad Coin. And uh, okay. we created, <laughs> and we've been giving them out to our fans. We did it for the first six six months or so. We gave out about, I guess we've given out now about two billion total, right, Mr. Joel? Conner? Yeah, yeah, more than yeah. yeah. Awesome. You've been doing it. You've been doing airdrops. We, yeah, we just did a big airdrop to uh, a fifty some odd thousand people uh, earlier this week while we were in South by Southwest. So, what would it take for us to get you to pump bad coin? <laughs> well, I'd, I'd have to give you my ERC twenty wallet address, which I will never do. <laughs> But it's I'll, actually I'll, it's on the bit share why don't, you, why don't you send me why don't you send me a tweet and uh and you you said earlier that I make a lot of money I do I charge 125,000 for a tweet but I will only tweet things that I believe in yeah you send me a tweet I'll do it for free all right Awesome. Bad coin to the world. We're actually giving it away. It's not a, you know, we're not making it. It's not a security fund. We'll make you, we'll make you an instant. I'm giving away the tweet, okay? Yeah, we'll make you a bad coin millionaire. No problem. Uh, well, John, we, we value your time and we uh, we really appreciate you joining us today. Travis, any uh, final question for the man? What you're actually saying is we are bored shitless. And will you please get off of my stage? I'll be happy to. <laughs> no. Well, actually, I, I will no, ask it's, it's one been more great. question. And we'll because we'll I, look forward I, to seeing you. Yeah. No, I, I think that, you know, you, you've had you've dropped a lot of thought bombs. It's going to make a lot of people think. Now, you know, one of the things is that data is such a valuable resource now. And, you know, blockchain, in a lot of ways, is kind of securing data. And, you know, what I maybe would ask then would be, like, what are your concerns about blockchain technology and the security of that? Because... You know what? It's most people. It's all roses and everything's great. So, what are your concerns? Your your true concerns about security in this space for for those who are in it? You want me to be honest here, Bobby? Mm -hmm. Please. Okay. Now let we have to go back to Jihan Wu. I love Jihan because he is the most humble man I have ever met and one of the world's most powerful men. However, his real goal has nothing to do with cryptocurrency and Bitcoin. It has to do with the application of artificial intelligence to the blockchain. Mm. He has now a working prototype of an artificial intelligence, a sick processor, which brings artificial intelligence into the world of reality. Now, here's where he and I separate. All right, I'm done being honest here. I'm 72 years old and I've been in computer science for 52 of those. I'm the oldest living man, I think, that, that still remembers how to program an IBM machine on a front panel before we had keyboards and screens. And I know the power of artificial intelligence and also know the very danger of artificial intelligence. When you apply artificial intelligence to something as powerful to the blockchain, and that intelligence is created by the world's smartest man, or certainly one of them, whose goal from a child has been to create this artificial intelligence. And his Bitcoin mining machines merely a bootstrap to get him to the position where he can put billions of dollars into this dream. That scares the shit out of me. Mm. And there's the security we should be worried about, not the security of our wallets, because anybody can make a million dollars. Keeping it is the problem. But what are you going to do when artificial intelligence says, oh, don't think about that. Let me worry about it for you, because I'm better at it, and it'll make you more money, which it will. Elon Musk what, just issued those same concerns here at uh, South by he's Southwest. A he's a smart man. However... We are up against, I believe, the world's smartest. If you ever sat down with Jihan Wu, he will blow your ass away. He gets inside your head and in 30 seconds has your brain cells rearranged. He's brilliant and he's humble. But he has created the most dangerous object that humankind has ever created. Way more dangerous than nuclear bombs or laser weapons that can fry people from space. No. The danger here is that we will love it and cherish it and give it what it wants. And that's the end of us. End of story, and I enjoyed being on Joe. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, John. Yep. We appreciate it. So 
Wow. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Even um, more wow if you watch it, like, you know, to see this cat um, talking about what he's talking about. I, he's super smart. You know, wh- you can judge his life choices all you want uh, and, you know, his rap sheet. But the dude is super smart. Super smart. He's like, you know, when I said earlier, like he's like no, but no 72 year olds cooler than him. He's like a rock and roll, you know, musician of some sort. He's like, he's like Richard. Keith Richards. Yeah. yeah. Like that's what, that, that's kind of what I meant when I was talking, when I said that, but he's like, I mean, this guy has the, the panache that, you know, few have, and he's rolling at age 72 where most people are retiring. This guy has way more energy than most people. And he is still making waves and it's crazy. And I, and I, I do want to give a special shout out to Janice McAfee. Uh, she was one of the ones who helped uh, rein him in to, uh, to make sure that she, that uh, she, you know, got him on the show. So big thanks to her. Yeah. We weren't sure if he was going to, you know, show up or not. You never know. And he was just a few minutes late and it happened, but he like he likes to mess with people too. He's, yeah. you know, he's, he's got a really dry sense of humor. And uh, do you have what he sent us afterwards because you know in during the interview he did a lot of you know you you this and you that and as he was doing it it'd be easy to take it personally but i was thinking he was talking about you in general Uh you know when he was kind of being maybe a little condescending uh but he then he emailed us afterwards do you have that handy i do if you listen to the interview there's a couple of questions that i asked where he sort of busted my balls he kind of came at me with those questions right and uh afterward but these are questions that were asked in the mastermind and some other questions that, you know, that we pulled, we basically asked what our audience wanted us to ask him for the most part, unless other stuff that we came up with. But after uh, the, uh, the interview was done pretty much immediately, he messaged, he emailed me and said, Hey, please alert me when the interview goes live. I enjoyed it. I sincerely apologize for any disrespect that I may have unintentionally shown you fine gentlemanly badasses. I am passionate about my life and the lives of my fellow travelers on this journey into the unknown. Yeah. So, you know, conscientious as well. And that was cool. And so that's, um, it's kind of funny. We call this episode 100 and we've actually done about 130 episodes, but a hundred numbered ones. And that's just how we roll here at Bad Crypto. Uh, We hope you guys enjoyed this as much as we enjoyed speaking with John. Yeah, as I said, man, I think this is one of the highlights to be able to chat with this guy in this space at this time. You know, he's a market mover with his ICO predictions and the different things that he said on Twitter and all. He's just a hotbed for discussions in this space. And, you know, it's a great honor to chat with him. And uh, thank you for coming on the show. Yeah, John, thanks. (laughs) All righty. Well, thanks for joining us. We're glad you guys are here. Don't forget to subscribe and follow and share the sharing is caring. It lets others know that you are a citizen of the Republic of Bad Cryptopia. We are the Bad Crypto Podcast, and that was about as badass as you can get. And it should help you guys to stay bad. Who's bad? The Bad Crypto Podcast is a production of Bad Crypto LLC. The content of the show, the videos, and the website is provided for educational, informational, and entertainment purposes only. It's not intended to be and does not constitute financial, investment, or trading advice of any kind. You shouldn't make any decisions as to finances, investing, trading, or anything else based on this information without undertaking independent due diligence and consultation with a professional financial advisor. Please understand that the trading of Bitcoin's and alternative cryptocurrencies have potential risks involved. Anyone wishing to invest in any of the currencies or tokens mentioned on this podcast should first seek their own independent professional financial advisor.